It was a banner night for the Cleveland Browns. NFL Awards show ahead of the Super Bowl. And it was a great evening. But this franchise should have sights set on not winning the awards at Super Bowl week, but winning the Super Bowl itself. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Super Bowl on Sunday. Jeff Lloyd joined by Pete Smith. Your latest Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LOB, the Locked On Browns podcast, brought to you by Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, joined today by the OBRs, Pete Smith. Appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen every single day. If you are not part of the everyday crowd by now, we'll jump in. The water's warm. Subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Down Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKDOWN for $20 off your first purchase. Comeback Player of the Year? Check. Joe Flacco wins. NFL Head Coach of the Year? Kevin Stefanski wins. NFL Assistant Coach of the Year? Jim Schwartz wins. And NFL Defensive Player of the Year? Whether or not the Watts like it or not, Miles Garrett. Pete. Look, these things are great. And obviously, it was a fun night. And obviously, you know, memories that will cap off what was a really, really fun season for the Cleveland Browns. But at the end of the day, it's hardware that every single one of these guys would chain, trade, uh, trade, obviously, for the opportunity to compete on Sunday. But the acknowledgement, <clears throat> and for us who, you know, obviously, this is something that we looked at this season with tunnel vision. But it, it's nice to see that this season was appreciated throughout the entire NFL community. And, you know, certainly hopefully there's more special ones to come, but kind of nice, a little icing on the cake for what was a really, really fun Cleveland Brown season. Well, I mean, it like, you know, you, there, there are people who are going to hang under the disappointment of the playoffs, but I would imagine that once you get away from this, you're going to remember this season finally, just because of the, the difficulty involved in it. And I think the awards, that were given certainly tell the st- help to st- tell the story of the season that in some words, and I w- here's the example I would use. I think people are going to remember, ha- have a more likely to remember Puka Nakua's season than they are CJ Stroud. Not that CJ Stroud wasn't phenomenal. It's just, we've seen quarterbacks have great seasons. Puka Nakua's was obviously historic and helped to sort of change the trajectory of the Rams, um, a team that I certainly thought was going to be awful this year. So just from that standpoint, I think some of the awards that went the way they did are, again, helped you tell the story of the season that people are going to remember just how insane four quarterbacks winning games, losing their best player on offense, being down to their fourth and fifth tackles, and just the amount they had to do to overcome this. Um, Certainly a testament to that, even if you're not sitting here um, happy with ultimately how it ends. And, no, look, you know, most specifically now Miles Garrett. And, you know, look – First off, you look like crybaby grade schoolers. You didn't win. You've already won one. It is what it is. And and the length that it's going to. Miles' year was special. There were defining moments. Nobody will forget the Indianapolis Colts game where he single-handedly was responsible for, for 11 points. Uh, you know, on the block field goal, obviously the sack of the end zone, which was covered by Tony Fields. And, you know, for Miles – he's a guy that was in this several seasons for about three quarters of the way, either the team faded off or miles wasn't 100%. And even you kind of got to that same spot again this year with miles, obviously the shoulder injury was able to come back. And unlike years past where miles Garrett was being double and triple teamed, it wasn't always appreciated because those opportunities were not being you know, gobbled up by other players soaking up one-on-ones or soaking up the fact that, oh, man, all of us went to 95 because that's what we're supposed to do. But other guys picked up the slack. But you still saw the game plan was the same. Once Miles was paired with players who were 
closer to his level, not on his level, because God knows how many people in this world even are. But once you saw that, teams didn't, they still didn't change the game plan. And this year, and obviously it was a driving part of the success. And that's kind of, I think, what made the difference for Miles is once you got to view this as him as a player, you know, with a good unit around him. And then all of a sudden it was like, wow, it just absolutely wow. He is a franchise quarterback relative to the defense. I mean, the thing that's funny about this to me is it's the J.J. Watt argument for Miles Garrett. Like the amount, the sort of force multiplier, the amount he elevates everybody around him is absurd. Um, you take Miles Garrett off the defense that was number one in the league. They're probably middle of the road and the Browns are, are not in the playoffs. I mean, like they are probably a 500 team or lower. He's that good. Obviously, you can point to the Colts game. He won the game. I mean, just he won the game. I, 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 it's net twenty points for the Browns for everything he did. He literally caused two touchdowns, uh, the safety, um, or block field goal, block field goal, which is yeah, obviously you know three points off them, and then ended up being three points for the Browns. It, it it's insane just how much he was able to do. Um, to make everybody around him better. And even when he wasn't on the stat sheet, like the people who pay attention and watch and, 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 you know, people who want to complain about advanced metrics, you just watch, just see how much you have to pay attention to him. He's the, he's the game plan. Every play, you have to know what you're doing with miles Garrett. Uh, Because if you don't, he will beat you. And even uh, the majority of the time, even when you do everything you can in your power to stop him, he still beats you. (laughs) <laughs> so it's he, it, it's difficult to quantify just how important that is. But like you get into this whole stats argument. If you just go by stats, Josh Allen is the MVP of the league and Lamar Jackson won almost unanimously. So clearly there is a consideration for what else happens. But, you know, to me, I think obviously I think Garrett was, was deserving this year. I, you know, I think he had it unbelievable argument last year Mm -hmm. even when the browns were terrible uh on on that side of the ball he was so good with 16 sacks and like he was like 50 like i think 48 percent of their sack total and everything else his his production was off the chart and he comes back and he was better this year even with a shoulder injury so you know the amount like it wasn't close in terms of Certainly, the voting in this was close, which is fine, whatever. But like the players said, Miles Garrett was better than TJ Watt or Micah Parsons. Only one of those was on their all pro team. It was Miles Garrett and Max Crosby. The Pro Football Writers Association of America all vote gave it to Miles Garrett. PFF, Miles Garrett, uh, the AP, obviously, like I said, close, but Miles Garrett, every single thing came back. It was unanimous. Like this idea that, like, it's a grand conspiracy or this, that, and the other, like everybody who has no interest, the fact that Micah Parsons is passionately arguing for miles Garrett in an award he was in (laughs) and finished third in is a testament to just how important and powerful, you know, powerful that miles Garrett is as a defensive force that you've got other guys going, no, like stop. He's the guy uh, that we all want to be. I mean, it's, it's remarkable just how, how, uh, special he is and like the other part that's crazy to me is beyond sort of you know the left half of the keystone state there are a lot of browns fans that don't understand just how special he is and will still routinely complain that he's not doing this that and the other because they just want to see box score or whatever or just don't get it so it's it's fascinating to watch and i've i've, I've talked about this i i think there are a lot of people who are missing out on on what will go down is one of the greatest Browns careers ever by far. And already the greatest pass rusher in Browns history. Well, and I think part of that is, is they've just never seen it. You know, there's a certain element of this fan base that has never seen truly one of the games elite. And that is exactly what this team has. And TJ Watt, JJ Watt, go to the kitchen table. Mom's got some subway. Suck it up, boys. It wasn't your year. All right. Just, just let it go. Cause you'll look worse as it goes on. And all of a sudden, People always want to knock the Cleveland Browns, and you got a lot of eyes at the Pittsburgh Steelers fan base right now. Like, are you not seeing this? I mean, just stop it. It's a poor, poor look. We're going to continue on here. Super Bowl Sunday.
coming. Chiefs, 49ers. We're going to go through it here, how the Chiefs find their path to victory, how the 49ers would find their path to victory. Latest Locked On Browns continues. Do not go anywhere. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Can you imagine if you had an extra $100 in Vegas, would you lay it all on black? Would you go slow, $5 hands, $10 hands? Would you sit at the slots? Well, game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And right now, all users get $100 off when they buy a big game ticket with code VEGAS. 100 with killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets it's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area the lowest price guarantee even cancellation protection job loss protection game time's got you covered you can see the view from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive all in prices show your total up front so there's no hidden fees so you know when you hit checkout what the price is going to be buy tickets in two seconds with two taps zone deals you pick the section game time picks the seats for big time savings and with the game time guarantee it means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time right now all game time users get 100 off a big game ticket with the code vegas 100 terms apply just download the game time app and use the code v e g a s 100 for 100 off a big game ticket download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed Jeff Lloyd, Pete Smith, continuing on here, your latest Locked On Browns, Chiefs, 49ers, Super Bowl, Sunday, Las Vegas. Pete, for me, I think the thing with the Chiefs, and look, I think the Chiefs, and with their experience, I think you saw that this year. There were times, middle of the season, this team didn't look like it was going to be the dominant AFC, AFC team it was. As the weeks went on, the performances got cleaner. The defense got tighter. I think there were a lot of people can, had their concerns about Travis Kelsey. I think Travis Kelsey wasn't 100%. And as the last few weeks in the playoffs have unfolded, you're starting to see maybe a more closer to 100% Travis Kelsey. I think the Chiefs go into this, and I mean, I don't want to blow it all right here, but I think the Chiefs go into this with a really nice built-up momentum right now where they're kind of peaking at the time teams who have experience in the playoffs should be peaking. The Chiefs have gotten better progressively through the playoffs. Uh, you know, it started in the first round, but they've they've just – every round they've gotten better. A, a, a team that many people thought was like – going downhill at the end of the year with all the reasons to believe that they go on the road to beat the Buffalo Bills. They go on the road to beat the Baltimore Ravens. Like that is a tough sled to get to the Super Bowl. Um, and that certainly should give them all the confidence in the world. And they've done it before. They've won. They, they This is not new for them. Uh, they know what to expect, even if it's, you know, it's obviously going to be a challenge for them, but 
there is far more pressure on the 49ers to win this game than there are on the Chiefs. Now, whether or not they actually feel that way is, you know, unclear, but the 49ers have that feeling of when are they going to finally do it? Is this going to be the year? I mean, I don't, we're still not quite to Steve Young territory. We're going to have to pull the monkey off the back, but um, still you can see why everything is working in the Chiefs favor. They play incredible defense and that has been the issue for the 49ers. You know, a team who, when Debo Samuel was slightly injured, they're they're sitting there going, "How are we possibly going to produce points with Brandon Ayuk and George Kittle and Christian McCaffrey and Trent Williams? I I, I just don't have any players. Like this is, <laughs> and, and I think the Chiefs are capable of of causing those types of problems um, for the 49ers. Brock Purdy has not. I think Brock Purdy in the second half of the Detroit Lions was magnificent like he was tremendous but there's a lot of play in the playoffs you're sitting there going you're not very good and the Chiefs have the potential talent to cause problems and you know it's debatable I'm certainly the 49ers are capable but I'm not sure I I'm confident they're going to be able to do the same thing to Patrick Mahomes um and the other thing you know with the Chiefs here and the way it's gone for the last couple of weeks look they've run the ball well San Francisco, there's their issues, obviously, in stopping the run. The Chiefs are just completely comfortable in their skin. They know who they are. They know what they are. You know, Rasheed Rice is going to be a solid standout performer for that team for years to come. If you listen to Miles Garrett speak about playing against the San Francisco 49ers, he mentioned how having interior pass rush seem to be something that really caused difficulty for Brock Purdy. Enter Chris Jones. Yeah. That one lines up pretty good, I think. Um, you know, Mahomes, obviously, for me, when you talk about Patrick, I think up to the point where Patrick Mahomes, it could be Patrick Mahomes versus door number one, and or whatever. You could say Patrick Mahomes versus, and I, I don't know a way that I could bet against it, or I would believe it would not happen. His relationship with Kelsey is going to be one of the greatest quarterback to receiver, wide receiver, tight end that has ever been in this league. Um, and now actually talking to some people, you know, prior to the NFC championship game, you know, and people, oh man, Detroit. I, I use the phrase, just say this sentence out loud to yourself. The Detroit Lions are going to play in the Super Bowl. You say it, and wow, well. Wow. Brock Purdy is going to outplay Patrick Mahomes to win a Super Bowl. That's a hard one to say and actually have belief and conviction in. But, makes for a nice segue, we're going to talk about what it would look like or how it would happen if the San Francisco 49ers do, in fact, find a way to win this game. Jeff Lloyd, Pete Smith, latest Locked On Browns continues. Everybody, stick around. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventures would be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone, Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen information center. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect midsize crossover for your next adventure. The 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can sit up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop Nissan.com. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on a two to six player stat projection, and you can watch the winnings roll in. The big game is right around the corner. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to turn every game changing moment into a hundred times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn. $10 into 1,000 
dollars. If Patrick Mahomes throws for more than one yard in the big game, you win on Prize Picks. Prize Picks has players and stat types that you're selecting. They highlight your winnings from Prize Picks. How fun and simple the experience of playing the game is. Put together a lineup. Obviously, there's going to be uh, you know overs unders that you think are going to hit. Put together a lineup. Obviously, great players in the biggest stage and makes it a little bit more exciting in what will be the last NFL game of the season. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Closing out your latest Lockdown Browns, your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen. If you are not part of the everyday crowd while making new plans, stand, subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Get yourself in there. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcast. The OBR's Pete Smith joins. We are talking a little bit of Super Bowl here. Pete, now look, San Francisco has personnel. There's no question about it. Defense, they have things that they do well. They have things that they don't do well. And, you know, for the 49ers, you know, a lot of people felt, hey, what would happen last year? What would happen if Brock Purdy didn't get hurt in Philadelphia? How would have that game worked out? How would the Super Bowl have worked out if they pulled that off? Well, you get your redemption song. Bob Marley movie coming out, right? Blow plug there. You get your redemption song this year. You are in the Super Bowl. Brock Purdy is healthy. And I totally agree with you about your points about the NFC Championship game. He stopped trying to force things and took what the defense gave him. And we got all the nice little non-athletic superlatives, you know, good effort, gutsy runner, you know, undis- hidden athlete, all those great things. Brock Purdy took the game into his hand, took what the defense gave him, and was able to manipulate it into a big win, obviously, for the 49ers. But this is the grander stage. The Chiefs have a very, very good defense. Not like there's not playmakers on this team for the San Francisco 49ers team. And for me, one of the keys, I think, is going to be Christian McCaffrey having a very productive day because one of the keys, obviously, to beating the greatest, one of the greatest quarterbacks that's ever lived is make him a spectator more than an actual performer. And that's kind of the task in front of these San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, you hit on a thing that that I think could really work for the 49ers in this line of scrimmage. Um, obviously, there's a lot of focus on the fact that Joe, Joe Thune is going to be out of this game. Yes. But the guy who's been completely forgotten in all this is Charles Amenahu, who, who tore his ACL last week. Well, and two saying, weeks ago, and it was like second – I mean, early, yeah. early in the game. Yeah, like he's a good player. Like it, he, he was causing problems in that game, so – Who's 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 it's not just that Charles Amena who's a threat, it's who's lining up over Trent Williams. The opposite of this, who's gonna help stop them? I mean, are they gonna literally just have Chris Jones live over there? I doubt it. I imagine Chris Jones is gonna be, you know, operating largely in the middle and trying to cause as much problem as problems as he can, which theoretically allows the 49ers to give more attention to him. Um, but yeah, losing a guy like Amena who not having Joe Thune. Uh, against a very dynamic 49ers front, those are real issues that could cause problems for, for both sides of the ball. Are the, the Chiefs going to be able to consistently stop the run? Are the, are, are, the, are the Chiefs going to be able to protect Patrick Mahomes? Or are we going to see a repeat of the Tampa Bay game, Tampa Bay Super Bowl, where he was under siege the whole game? That's a huge key for the 49ers. I don't think the, like, I think, it sort of works for the 49ers that they don't really need to have great corners because, you know, Rasheed Rice is a very good player, but, you know, they, the 40, the 49ers don't necessarily have to have, you know, lockdown guys to deal with the, the Chiefs receivers. What they have to have is guys who can trail Travis Kelsey. And I think certainly they, they have linebackers, they have safeties that can, can cause problems in that effort. Um, they can disrupt there, but those are the things that sort of, uh, help them in the situation. Obviously, look, if, if the chiefs can't rush the passer with guys like Amena who out or Chris Jones is not dominating the entire way, the Steve Spagnuolo solution is usually to blitz. So at that point, it becomes a combination of Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy being able to diagnose and understand where the ball has to go when the chiefs send pressure, um, 
Otherwise, you could get the Brock Purdy that the Cleveland Browns saw, where he's constantly under siege and cannot, you know, cannot get out, out of his own way. Uh, I think to your point, they are going to try to run the ball a lot. I think they're going to try to control the clock. I think they want to control tempo. I think they want to limit the amount of time Patrick Mahomes is on the field and just space out the amount of time between drives. Now, it's easier said than done. Again, the Chiefs have a very good defense, but the 49ers have have the, the pieces, have the guys to create those problems and, and create matchups that, that work for them. Well, Pete, you know, we got to do it, obviously. All right, so we need winner, score, Super Bowl MVP. Well, I assume that I, I'm not betting against Patrick Mahomes. I mean, come on. Ever, um, ever, ever. Um, the ghost of the greatest quarterbacks that ever lived. And you put together the greatest talents of individually and you turn it into this super transformer. No, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I mean, th- there's that element. And there's the fact that Kyle Shanahan has not figured out how to get out of his own way in some regards. And I'm not just talking about play calling and some of the things he might do there. It's his, his uh, lack of aggressiveness in certain situations that call for it. He will punt in the middle of the field on fourth and one at some point, And you'll just sit there going, what are you doing? You have Trent freaking Williams run behind this guy. And, and it, but in the same scenario to that, though, would be the chiefs would have it on their own 34 after that punt. And it would be fourth and one. What are you doing? Boy, stay on the field. I mean, right. that, that is the fourth and two was a huge play yep. that allowed them to score the opening drive. And they also got stopped on fourth and one later against the Ravens, but they are willing to, to, to take those all chances. And You're, try in Vegas, baby. You're in Vegas. You better be all they are looking to score touchdowns as opposed to settle for field goals. Ultimately, I think, I don't think this is going to be a high scoring game. I think it's going to be similar to what we saw in the AFC championship. So I, I think it's going to be something like, let's say 20, 23 to like, 16 or something like that. And and ultimately, I think uh, Patrick Mahomes will get the MVP. I, there's a chance maybe they'd give it to Kelsey, but I think Mahomes will get it if, if they win. Well, obviously, I do not believe the Kansas City Chiefs are losing this game. This team is just that good. Um, as far as the score, I'm a little bit more in line, I think, with you. I, you know, as much as you think Dome, Super Bowl, you know, th- I think there's going to be a turnover or two. Obviously, you know, the Chiefs don't care. They know they're going to play aggressive. Um, they understand with the aggressive play, you know, that will lead to a ter- turnover or two. Purdy, it's going to be interesting. I think Chris Jones, who most likely will be playing his last game for the Kansas City Chiefs and would like to cash in big time one more time, is going to have a big game. As far as score, you know, I, I, would, I, I, I think I'm kind of in line. I think maybe a little bit further, though, maybe a 24-13. I, I think this game is probably going to be over by the 10-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Um, MVP? Yeah, I, I if think Travis Kelsey do, just if Travis Kelsey does enough somehow, some way, it will be swiftified. <laughs> and Travis Kelsey will end up MV. If he scores a touchdown and has over 70 something yards receiving, and part of it might be because what he's done the last two weeks, obviously phenomenal and against Buffalo, certainly solid against the Baltimore Ravens. But go ahead, I didn't want to cut you off. Well, I, I would say if he does, it's gonna be all the more reason I think he's gonna retire. <laughs> He'll walk off. Do Let me tell you look, him and his brother can write their ticket. You well, think you think Pat McAfee, no, uh, they, no, they want to go that you. route. They can go that route. I I, I just wouldn't – I think Travis Kelsey will retire. I don't know if he'll stay retired, but I think he will retire. He may come back for, you know, some games if the, the Chiefs are in a good spot. But but listen, when I, when I hear things like, you know, you do interviews with GQ or whatever it was, talking about how much pain you're in, mm-hmm. you know, and and – I, I think the Chiefs are going to have more trouble. Uh, obviously, if they lose Chris Jones, I think there's going to be sort of an you know a last dance feel to this thing. But yeah, I mean, look, and same reason I, I'm not going to bet Patrick Mahomes bet against Patrick Mahomes in the game. I'm not going to bet against him for Super Bowl MVP. He may get a scramble for a touchdown. He may find Rasheed Rice. He may throw the, the, the MVS pass on third down over the top to to secure. Uh, possession at the end of the game like he, he he is it's it's his world and and he doesn't turn over the ball which is the other part about this so even if Travis Kelsey is spectacular I think the part of this is Patrick Mahomes is has played so clean that it becomes very difficult in terms of a game management thing if he's not turning over the ball 
and he plays at a pretty high level against the 49ers defense, it's going to be impossible to go against him. Well, and even for Travis Kelsey as well. I mean, you know, wow. Um, you know, maybe I should retire and propose to my billionaire girlfriend. I, I, I suspect that's a betting line somewhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, may, look, look, I, I don't think you're going to propose to a billionaire on the field at the end of the Super Bowl. But hey, if I'm contemplating retirement and, you know, uh, my next option is to shoot get shoot. married to a billionaire. I think I, I think Trap's gonna be okay. I think things will be all right. Could be the, the, the perfect perfect forty eight seventy two hours for if uh, an athlete like obviously Travis Kelsey. He is Pete Smith from the OBR. Um, we always yeah, obviously you know look as much as we would love to sit down and chop this down and break this down about the Cleveland Browns playing in the Super Bowl. That day is gonna come. But hey. It's business, it's content. We got to do what we got to do. I hope everybody enjoys the game. Uh, always, a, you know, Pete's help, obviously, this season, obviously, throughout the playoffs. And now we officially close the door. And what Lockdown Brown started on was all season talk. It was draft talk. That's where it cultivated. That's where it marinated. That's where it grew. And now, obviously, it's here where it's at. And I appreciate you guys so much. Make sure you're following Pete at underscore Pete Smith underscore, obviously, or the OBR. Uh, we had Ian on yesterday. Obviously, they're they're ready to go. These guys are ready to put out full, great off-season content. Make sure you are checking all of that out. Of course, your host, Jeff Lloyd. Appreciate you all who can make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. Join the Everyday Crowd. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on ELOB. Let's go Browns.